Last week, we went over how fun and easy it is to hack your Nintendo Wii, but what's the point of doing all that if you don't know how to enjoy it? Well, luckily we have today's video going over the top 10 best Wii hacks for the Wii. Or uh, maybe the top 10 best homebrew apps for the Nintendo Wii, but I don't know what I titled this video yet. Give me a break. Starting off this list, we have a pretty basic one being Glow Wii. All this does is make your Wii disk drive glow or flash in certain patterns that you get to control. This is pretty cool, right? I mean, there's not much to say about it, but it's a cool little hack. I was going to place my menu file as number 10, but that mod is prone to bricking people's Wiis when they do something wrong, and I don't want to encourage you guys to download that and then accidentally brick your Wii. My menu file, though, if you are curious, just changes the theme on your Wii menu. So if you ever go on a YouTube video and you see one of those crazy looking themes, it's because they're using this mod. It's certainly cool and arguably cooler than Glow Wii, but it's too dangerous. Glow Wii, on the other hand, is harmless and pretty fun. It even has more customization options than I would have assumed, but I do wish there was some better UI. Either way, this is just a fun little hack for your Wii that makes it look a little bit cooler. Plus, if you want to take some pictures of your Wii for Instagram and Twitter, or I mean, uh, X, this might enhance that a little bit. Also, before before we move on, I want to preface this video by saying that Reconnect24 and Weemify are banned because first of all they're overpowered, but more importantly I'm going to be doing another video talking about those soon. And if you've never heard of them, they basically allow you to play games online again, but just subscribe and stay tuned for that video. Number 9 isn't the most flashy of mods, which probably isn't what you expected me to say after something as simple as Glow Wii, but we have yet another WAD manager, or uh, YOM. Let's stick to YOM. What this does is install WADs onto your Wii. Now, if you install a bad WAD, you can brick your Wii, but as long as you don't do that, you're fine. WADs are basically those channels that you used to be able to download from the Wii Shop channel. Like, do you want that limited edition Club Nintendo Doc Lewis punch out game? This would be how you install that as a channel. You can play watch through USB Loader GX, but it won't install them to your channel, it will just load them, meaning you'll have to have the wads on your USB or on your SD card at all times. If you install a wad on the other hand, you can load up a Wii with WiiWare and all the other channels and then give it to your friend without having to let them keep your SD card or your USB because they're installed the same way they would have been installed if you downloaded them normally back in the day. So basically, installing them just installs them normally how they would have normally been installed. That makes sense, right? This is how I'm installing those Mega Man games for the Wii's I'm selling on Whatnot, by the way, so obviously this is very useful. But, uh, it's not very appealing to watch, and there's not much else to talk about, so, uh, yeah. I just had to bring it up for the people watching this video to see what mods they need to add to their Wii, because this one is fairly useful. <laughs> For number 8, we have yet another very simple but useful mod being the button tester. Sure, you could just open up a game and try to test buttons on your controllers, but this is much more useful and detailed way to do it. It lets you test Wii modes, Wii accessories like the nunchuck and the classic controller, GameCube controllers, and even the Guitar Hero guitars, but uh, I don't have one of those so I can't show that off. Again, this homebrew wrap isn't really a big deal, but it's just nice to have around, especially when you have over 100 broken Wii modes lying around your house. You need a quick way to test them after trying to fix them all. You guys know how that is, right? No? Just me? Well, I promise that video is coming soon, and this app is going to make things a lot easier for me to deal with. I mean, it lets you test every button very quickly, as well as the motion controls and vibrations. I'm sure whatever dev tool Nintendo used to test the Wiimotes was on a similar level to this, so it's a really nice app just to have on your SD card, just in case. Plus, if you're absolutely beating somebody in Smash Bros and they blame their controller, you can pull this app up and make sure they aren't johnning. Anyway, I know this is yet another underwhelming hack for the Wii, but it is very useful. And that's important too, guys. I'm also not counting homebrew games in this video, by the way, because those are literal games and not really hacks, otherwise stuff like RuneScape might have made the cut. But worry not, guys, I promise things are only going to get cooler and cooler as we get closer to number one.
For number 7, we have the first slightly cool hack being Wii MC. Now this is just a Wii media player that can play videos off your SD card or a USB or something like that, as well as MP3 files, but what makes this app so cool is the fact that it unlocks your Wii's ability to play DVDs and watch movies, which I think is one of the coolest things ever. If you didn't know, the Wii was originally going to let you play DVDs on it like a PS2, but Nintendo did not feel like paying the rights for that, so they removed the feature last second. But by remove the feature, I mean they removed it software wise. Hardware wise, that feature is still there on the disc laser and Wii MC lets you play any DVD that you would like, which is just super cool. Now I will warn you guys that playing DVDs does wear down your Wii's laser more from what I've heard and if there's one thing I've learned from fixing the 20 Wii's video, it's that these lasers are pretty important so I'm not going to be doing that to any of these Wii's, but uh, it is an option and it's just super cool to unlock that feature. Plus, this thing also just lets you watch YouTube, making this the only homebrew hack I'm aware of that lets you watch Tudor P videos. So really, this should be number one. You agree, right? I mean, Tudor P on the Wii? Wii Wednesday on the Wii? What could be better? Don't answer that. The answer is nothing. For number 6, we have the Notorious Gecko OS. What this does is basically load cheats for your games, meaning that one Smash Bros mod I made a tutorial on almost 10 years ago would require this for you to play it. Most Gecko OS cheats are stuff like moon jumping in the Lego games, or flying, or getting infinite money, or invincibility, etc. Just stuff that feels like Game Shark on steroids. I don't have footage of this, but I remember one time I was using this with Mario Kart Wii, and one of the cheats I had made you instantly finish the race when you cross the finish line at the very start of the track. So most of the records on my Wii were like less than a second long for the entire track, which is just funny. Most of these cheats are just funny and fun, but it's still a cool hack. I mean, this is the closest thing you can get to my childhood idea of hacking a game, so that has to mean something. Now, USB Loader GX also comes with this integrated into the app, which is the main reason this isn't higher on the list, but we gotta give the OG some love. Gecko OS is just cool, and if you're ever bored and want to play some hacks, this is the best way to do it. Unless you have a USB Loader, of course, but a uh, spoiler alert, we'll talk about that later. With the first half of the Wii hacks out of the way, things are really about to step up a notch, or several notches. We're about to go from things that are just interesting, neat little novelties or conveniences that I thought were cool and should be included into the video, to things that will single-handedly convince you to mod your Wii. I mean, number one was the entire reason I modded my Wii back in like 2010. Coming in at number 5, we have Preloader. Now this can actually do a lot of stuff and most of it is fairly technical and not something I want to try to explain in a video like this, but some of the simpler stuff it lets you do is move the disc channel around on the system menu, skip the warning section when you turn on your Wii, skip the connection test when you connect to the Wi-Fi, and a lot of stuff like that. But the most important and coolest thing this does is let you unregion lock your Wii. You remember all those Japanese games I got from my Whatnot Care package a while back in that one video? Well, despite only having North American Wiis, I can now test and play all of my Japanese games like Donkey Kong Country Returns. This is one of the coolest things ever to me, and I don't exactly know why. Like, yeah, it is cool to play games that normally would be region locked, but the fact that it's just an option to completely make your Wii region free is amazing and one of my favorite features of any hacked Wii. Plus, another really big feature of Preloader is that it can save you from getting bricked. The way this loads is by turning on your Wii with the reset button held down. That's how you get to this menu. So if you do something Something stupid and brick your Wii and you're still able to load this and play your games and probably even fix your bricked Wii which is a pretty nice feature. Now I've personally never bricked any Wiis despite the amount of hacking I've done to them over the decades and decades I've been doing this but that's just because I always do tons of research and try to be extra careful but if I ever did see a hack that I really wanted that had the risk of bricking my Wii I would definitely install this as a trump card or a, a, a safety net. I don't know if trump card is the right word for that but you know what I mean. I would install this to be safe. Plus, again, it can make your Wii region free. I mean, how cool is that? You know what? I'll answer that for you. It's cool enough to put Preloader as the fifth best Wii hack of all time.
four. Number four, we have a fairly obscure hack for the Wii being Net Slug. This allows you to play offline games like New Super Mario Bros. Wii with your friends online. Now, before you start asking, hey, what about Wiimify and Reconnect 24 being banned and not this being banned? Let me explain, guys. Those other two hacks basically bring back Nintendo's online services under new homebrew ownership. That's why it lets you play Mario Kart online or use the Check Me Out channel. But Net Slug allows you to play games that only ever had local multiplayer online, similar to how the Dolphin emulator has netplay, except, well, it is a bit more complicated. There's a lot to set up for this thing, and a lot of things need to be synced between your friend's Wiis. For example, you need to have all the same sensor bar settings, like, you know the setting where you say whether or not it is above or below your TV? That has to be the same for everyone's Wii. You also have to have the exact same save file, since those don't sync up, meaning you probably just want to start a new game and then keep that as your net slug save file when your friends want to play New Super Mario Bros or, uh, Mario Party 8, but who plays Mario Party 8? Despite the complications though, this thing works great and is super impressive that you're able to play new Super Mario Bros. Wii online with your friends on the original hardware of the Wii. I mean, Nintendo didn't even allow online play for new Super Mario Bros. until it was on the Switch. Plus, if you watched my top 10 best Wii games video, you'd know that new Super Mario Bros. Wii is actually one of my favorite games despite how much other YouTubers tend to hate on it, so I love this mod. I mean, I haven't really had a chance to use it because I don't have any friends with modded Wiis. I do have a lot of totally real friends though in real life that are real. I promise. So I usually just do dolphin net play, but still, being able to do this on an actual Wii is so much cooler, and I gotta respect old net slug here. Just don't get salty whenever I throw you down a hole, because I like doing that, and it really might mess up the connection. For number three, we have the App Store for Wii Hacks being the Homebrew Browser. There's no better way to describe it than that. This thing gives you easy access to like 80% of all homebrew hacks on the Wii and is by far the easiest way to install any homebrew app. Back when I was first modding my Wii many years ago, it wasn't so simple to install channels. You had to do a lot of stupid and goofy things like jumping through hoops and I have pulled many a hamstrings doing that. Eventually, the Wii modding scene evolved and all you had to do was drag and drop things onto your SD card for the majority of homebrew apps, but then came the homebrew browser. Now, you really only need to install this one mod and it allows you to browse almost every other homebrew app you would ever need and download them directly from your Wii. You do need an internet connection, but that's only because it literally downloads the apps to your SD card and saves you a lot of trouble. I mean, maybe this shouldn't count because it's just an app store, but as someone who's been around the Wii modding scene longer than I've been making videos on YouTube, it's really impressive to see how easy things have become for people and I'm very happy to see things have gotten better. This is the biggest ease of access improvement I've ever seen in all of my years of Wii modding next to maybe Letter Bomb or something. So if installing stuff gives you anxiety or you're just lazy, download this one hack onto the homebrew channel and lay back on your couch and browse for mods you actually want to use. Plus, it's a great way to browse for games, which I'm still not counting, but like, I didn't know there was RuneScape on the Wii before I had the homebrew browser, nor did I know there was Windows Pinball, but that one didn't work on my Wii for some reason. I wish I could report that and leave a review like on Google Play, but I guess that's asking too much. Either way, even if this shouldn't technically count, I think it does count since it is a Wii hack and a homebrew app and it's by far the most useful and easy to use one out of all of them, which is why it is the third best homebrew app of all time. For number two, we actually have a combination of several homebrew apps and hacks being the vast amount of emulators you're able to use on your Wii. Emulators are one of the most popular things when it comes to hacking any console or even using a computer. And the Wii is obviously no exception with great NES, Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, Atari Arcade, and even some Mac emulators at your disposal. There's even more than that, but if you want to see a full list, use the homebrew browser and just start scrolling. The best emulators, or at least the ones that seem to be the most fleshed out, are are the NES, Super Nintendo, and Game Boy Advanced emulators. They can play ROMs anywhere on your SD card and allow you to use save states and even cheat codes on games you'd like. They're also a great alternative to spending your precious Wii points on the Wii Shop channel. I mean, uh, don't pirate guys, only use ROMs you legally own. One of the best parts of this though is that it allows you to play ROM hacks and custom ROMs on your Wii as well. For example, I have the Mother 3 English translation that I might actually get around to playing one day since it's on my Wii. I also forgot my ROM for Metroid 
2 for the original Game Boy had a color hack installed to it, but the GBA emulator reminded me, which is very cool. Plus, on the NES emulator, you could also play tons of amazing ROM hacks like Rockman 4 Minus Infinity and, uh, you know, all the other ones. ROM hacks are something I really want to get into more, especially when it comes to Mega Man games, and I will eventually make a lot of videos about them, but if you're really curious about Mega Man ROM hacks and you just can't wait any longer, I highly suggest checking out Fake Mega Rob Dad's Twitch channel because he's one of the best Mega Man ROM hack players in the world, and he will tell you all about them and show off the best ones. But anyway, enough on that tangent. Emulators are great, and they all run super well on the Wii. I mean, what could possibly be better than every emulator for every Nintendo system plus other systems that released before the Wii? The number one best homebrew app or Wii hack is of course going to be USB Loader GX. I mean, we all saw this coming. Get it? We. But as much as I like subverting your expectations and trolling you guys, this is undebatably the best homebrew hack you could ever have, and it's also the most popular for that reason alone. Not only can you play Wii games off of a USB drive, but it also has Gecko OS implemented into it, meaning you can also use all of those cheat codes. It also allows you to use WADs, meaning you don't have to install any of them with YAM. It also allows you to play Japanese and PAL exclusive games as well, meaning you don't need preloader. I mean, this app has the features of several of the top 10 best hacks already, as well as letting you play Wii games off of a USB drive. Plus, at some point, USB Loader GX added the ability to play GameCube games off of your USB drive as well. I'm not sure when this was added because it certainly wasn't around when I first installed this hack back in the day, but this just adds a whole nother layer to it because I love the GameCube even more than I like the Wii. You can go from playing Project M to Melee to Mario Kart Wii to Mario Kart Double Dash to Kirby Air Ride, etc. all in one homebrew app. This app just has it all and is presented with multiple different options for UI for you to use. You can look at all the covers of your games like a virtual collection, or you can look at them in the Wii menu style like your Wii has a thousand discs jammed inside of it at once you get to choose which one loads. There are a couple other USB loader type hacks like Wii Flow that's supposed to be nicer looking, but as much as I like Wii Flow, USB loader GX is just as good as it gets due to the amount of features it has. We all knew this was going to be the best hack on the Wii, so I hope I didn't disappoint you by not surprising you, but you can't use USB loader GX in tell me there's a better Wii hack out there. Well, unless you're subscribed, of course, but subscribing to my channel gets you many privileges that the average human being can't have or get away with, so uh, you should try that out for yourself and find out what it entails. Those were the top 10 best hacks for the Nintendo Wii, or the top 10 best homebrew channel apps. I still don't know what I titled this video, but as always, I hope you enjoyed. And for those of you who are still wondering, I am still working on fixing 100 plus broken Wiimotes. It's just that it's hard to film that video and fix the Wiimotes while making two videos a week. So it might be another week or two before they're ready, but I literally have 106 broken Wii remotes in my house and some of them look real bad, but you gotta subscribe and stay tuned if you wanna see how that goes.